Hi Jim and I, welcome to your 2018 annual tarot forecast. It's Raina here. Some of you may have uh, actually watched a two-part reading that I did yesterday and that was on Christmas Eve and I took it down and I'm doing a totally new one and the reason may seem a bit silly to some people but I take this very seriously. I discovered that one of my tarot cards was on the ground and um, for me, I like to have everything intact when I do a reading. Also, because it was in two parts, I feel that some people um, were not paying attention to the title. And so, because I got like, um, at the time that I, I took it down, I had like three thumbs up and two thumbs down. Because I think some people just automatically said, oh, it ended. Okay, uh, you know this sucks, you know, and of course they didn't realize that there was another part coming. And so I'm, I'm going to just do it all over again. And so I'm just shuffling the cards. I'm going to kind of do like a more uh, trimmed down version because, um, you know, since I already did it before, but I did want to do it. And, and if you saw the first one, here's another uh, way to look at it. <laughs> Okay, it's interesting because I do think I got the five of the five of Pentacles in the other one in a different position. So, the top row are influences of 2017 that may or may not still be in play. Some of it you may have resolved, and it's like there's this feeling of um, these things being important to you coming into the new year and some of them are still kind of up in the air and I'm going to just um, bring these two cards because they kind of connect the four of wands can be a, a new home marriage and then the hierophant can also be about marriage so some of you may have gotten married I did get um, a, the chariot card so I don't know if anybody married a cancer person that's certainly um, the chariot can, can indicate that the Chariot is a card of success, and so that's really wonderful. Um, the, the Hierophant can be you possibly, for whatever reason, bowing to tradition. Maybe you're somebody, let's say you're a woman who is in her late 30s, and you never thought, you never dreamed you'd get married and you decided to um, or you're buying a house because you've had success in your career and maybe um, the Hierophant refers to a Taurus individual that's in your life it connects to Taurus or you're working in a corporate environment the Hierophant can be this kind of conformity to the group but there's this traditional vibe coming from your 2017 cards, whatever has been going on for you. So that's very interesting, Gemini. I wonder if any of these resonate with you. Now let's look at the, the new year. We have the King of Pentacles, which is a card that connects to Earth energy again with the Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn, this is somebody who is in a position of authority. Um, but I'm looking at this as influences in your life, not necessarily people, places, and things, as the bottom row may suggest. I guess it all can be kind of mixed in there. But if this is not um, a boss or somebody who is that you're with, 
who is a very practical male, mature male, uh, that you're dealing with, maybe romantically. It could be this facet of you that you have become um, in your, maybe in your middle-aged years, a, a business person who really is um, successful at what you're doing. Um, the Seven of Pentacles is about there still is something that you are waiting to see if it really um, works out. This could be financially or if it's with a, a person, an earth sign person, it would be more of a seeing if financially the two of you are compatible because there's a very practical energy to this. And with the Seven of Pentacles, it's like, can this work? Or maybe the other person is someone who travels a lot and you're not sure if you would stay together if, if you're always like apart. So you're still trying to see if it's going to work out. It may be that you're newlyweds and so you're kind of like on pins and needles uh, making sure that you're really compatible. The other thing is that you may decide to, to open a business and you're making sure that this is going to really sustain itself. The Ace of Pentacles, another practical thing. You get all pentacles in 2018 for these influences. I mean, for these themes. So it looks like it's going to be a very practical year for you. And I think I got the Knight of Pentacles in the first reading, didn't I? I don't remember. But um, the Ace of Pentacles can mean that a business loan goes through in 2018 or that you receive a lump sum of money, maybe um, from a very unexpected source. It's actually right above the Tower card. A lot of people fear the Tower card, but the Tower card can mean just something has to give and something unexpected happens. Maybe you have this windfall and you had no idea and that just changes the game for you. Again, starting something with an earth sign individual like a marriage, a relationship. The outside influences, we have the nine of swords. This could possibly be another air sign person. I believe in the last reading I got like a, a Libra person who may be causing problems because I got the justice card. I don't know. But the, the, the three air signs are uh, Gemini, Libra, and Aquarius. I did get an Aquarius for the outcome card, so maybe that is that person. But I would think that would be a bad um, kind of a influence, a toxic influence of that person because the Nine of Swords is a card of anxiety. So somebody who is maybe bringing you anxiety or you still have it, but it's coming from the outside, so it's not generated within you. Um, maybe there is somebody, yeah, I did get, I believe I got some cards that dealt with addiction. So I'm going to just kind of um, reference that reading. If It seems like some people that meant something to some people. Um, so, it could be that you're connected to somebody who has these problems and it's affecting you. Um, however, I do get here this offer of love coming in for you. Now, this is love. Um, you know, Ace of Pentacles could be a new relationship, but that's more, that could be, um, even if it was like a romantic relationship, it would be very practical. Um, it could even be like a somebody who wants to, go into business with you. But this is a card that is dealing with actual love that is forming, that is soul-based. Maybe somebody who's your soulmate, you know, comes into your life. Now with the tower, um, this could be something that it's like love at first sight and you know there's no question in your mind. Sometimes in, in private readings, when I do love readings, people are asking me to, you know, show, you know, giving me multiple people to choose from which one is the best one. And I'm always thinking they're probably none of them are because 
you know, when you know, you know. I believe that. And I don't mean that you say, okay, this person is my soulmate. I mean, you know that you kind of just sync with that person. It just feels like the two of you are of one mind. That you really like are vibing with that person. The Tower card could be you coming to that, you know, realization when you first meet that person uh, just by looking at them or talking to them. Or it could mean that there's this catalyst that propels you um, to shake up your life in some way. Um, we do have uh, eclipses, which um, tend to bring those changes. And um, the next one coming up, as I record this in December, is on, on February 5th. I'm, I'm talking, well, there's a lunar eclipse, but I'm, that's uh, in Leo. I'm talking about the solar eclipse in Aquarius, mid-February, February 15th. So that, for you, is your ninth house. So perhaps you're going to be traveling and that's where you meet your love. I don't know. I, I did. It's funny. I did get the nine of of um, of swords, and and the number nine, the ninth house is about travel. So who knows? But um, just keep just keep like an open mind because you may suddenly create a whole new life for yourself, and that would be very cool, Gemini. Especially if you've been feeling like you're in a rut in some way. Advice, the Hermit card, well, this is a little bit challenging for you. There, there's that number nine again, because this the number nine connects to humanitarian efforts, artistic efforts, and it's a number of, it can be um, based upon the Hermit. Uh, we're talking about someone who is going within, okay? So there's that spiritual element to it. And anything that you do, I mean, it's just common sense that if you want to make the best decisions in your life, that you would take into account the spiritual factor, that you would be very um, concerned about your um, spiritual life as well as the material. Now you see all of these cards here are cards that are connected to the pentacles. So that's the world. But you need that balance. You need to be very connected to your higher self and to always reflect on what it is that you're really trying to accomplish. I think that's the best way to handle any um, decision and new life transition that, that comes about. The Three of Pentacles is a card of the architect's card, like building something great. The feeling of you're, you're doing something that's going to have long-lasting effects of a material nature, a solid nature. And I feel with all the Pentacles that that is certainly the case. The outcome is the Star card. So again, it connects to Aquarius. It could be feelings of hope restored in your life. Feelings that you're on the right track. And you're maybe you feel more positive than you have recently. Uh, particularly because your career may be doing really well. And you have maybe new love coming into your life. So... I'm glad that I did this over again, Gemini, because I think that this was uh, a little bit more compact, but it touched upon some important things. So I wish you well in 2018, and if you'd like a private reading, please click on the link below. My website is rainamoonastrology.com. Take care. Bye.